Sister Rana, before we uh, begin, before we proceed, uh, Sister Aisali is having trouble hearing. And so if maybe uh, uh, Professor Menu or Brother Ty could assist her, she's, uh, she's not able to hear and I'm not sure. All right, Sister Rana, you're, 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 um, you're muted and uh, please go. Okay. Uh, good morning, Rose. Um, Uncle Jackson. Uh, Rose, Rose is a community of the sacred African way. The way is Mott, truth, justice, and righteousness. We believe the teachings of our elders and our ancestors that the Creator, God, created the universe and all life and has placed in each of us as a part of the divine spirit. God living in us and through us has given us the right and power to establish peace and justice in all human life and true harmony with all of creation. We believe in the living faith of our ancestor, ancestors. Ashe? Ashe. I wanted to also make a special announcement about today's celebration in that um, everyone with the exception of Baba Jeff, but we do thank you Baba Jeff, who will be a part of the celebration today is a graduate of our recently completed orientation class or classes, I should say, and it's two instructors. So both the Dr. Ben class and also the Sankara class uh, was made up of all of the people who you will see presenting today and also actually a couple of others uh, Fania Kamakini, Celeste McAllister, and Ibun Akanke. Um, although they will not be presenting today, they were a part of those classes. So just again, a congratulations to all of those who completed. And just so that you know who some of the faces are uh, that you're seeing today, right? So um, ne next up, we are going to bring forward Sister Debbie Lewis for our historical tribute. And Debbie, you know what to do. Who are you with? Representing Dr. Ben. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Go right ahead. <laughs> so. OK, so my historical tribute, I'm assuming everyone can see, is on the gullahs in Florida. Um, and let me just say that I'm also doing the Black Knowledge Matters on Wednesday. This is not gonna be duplicated in my Wednesday presentation. So if you're interested in more information about the galas, we'll see you then. Right now, I'm only, oh, wrong button. I'm only gonna talk about really the Black Seminoles and the first, second and third Seminole War. But if you wanna know about the language, arts, any particular battles, important gullahs in society, and maybe the issues that they're facing today, then we will talk about that on Wednesday. So who are the gullahs? Um, they are protectors of what is African in the African-American ethnicity. They have put up a heroic resistance to cultural assimilation. They are relatively unmixed Blacks who reside from you can see North Carolina all the way down to Florida. This is called the uh, uh, heritage, the uh, uh, cultural corridor. Um, they have preserved their heritage in the form of food, religion, biology even, and language. I went to um, a Gullah Geechee festival about 10 years ago and I was really surprised that everybody was there. Most of them were dressed in African dress. And um, I was just really impressed with their commitment to culture. There are approximately 500,000 speakers of the Gullah language today. So they actually, are, this is a blow up of one of the areas in the corridor. And you can see that they are actually the islands. That's what they call them, the sea islands. 
And the sea, the sea islands helped them be isolated and really, I think, helped to preserve their corridor. And I read somewhere that it wasn't until the last 50 or 60 years that you could get off the island without a boat. And so the Geechee, the Gullah Geechee were able to really maintain their culture because of that. Their, um, the Gullahs are sort of North Carolina, South Carolina, and then the Geechees are Georgia, but really now they, it, it's just interchangeable. They're just one in the same. So I thought this timeline would be helpful so that you would understand what they dealt with during their time in Florida. Florida was under Spanish rule first, and they provided asylum to the slaves just to use them as a buffer against the British. And the British did the same thing when they took rule as well. Um, they were uh, part and parcel and used during the first Seminole War, uh, the second Seminole War, and then after this, during the second Seminole War, they started the mass exodus, their own trail of tears. So I have lots of pictures in this, and I think they're just amazing. They're not relevant necessarily to the text, but uh, the Spanish used the, the uh, Seminoles to um, to just keep the land away from the British. They didn't really, uh, really care about them or anything like that. As early as 1693, if they would con convert to Catholicism, they would give them land and let them live there. So, um, what was I gonna say? Uh, the, sim the word Seminole is a Spanish word and it means wild men. It applies to both the Indians and the Blacks who were, who were uh, runaways. The Indians were mostly Creek Indians. And then of course the slaves were from the, the corridor. Although they worked together and shared many things, the Gullahs did establish their own settlements and they were really good at um, living in that area. And they helped the Indians a lot transition to living in the Florida culture. Um, the freedom seekers, um, so let's see, when Florida was ceded to the English in 1763, many Spanish left, they went south, they evacuated to Cuba and also the Bahamas. And we'll see later that there is a group of Gullahs that now live in the Bahamas that are direct resultants, direct, um, directly connected to the freedom fighters that were in Florida. But the Gullahs were really physically uh, suited for this climate and they, um, it said that without their assistance, the Indians would not have been able to effectively cope in the Florida environment. So that's the background. Now let's start talk about the first Seminole War. It was instigated by escaped slaves. It was actually Andrew Jackson who was uh, coming down from the US to get the slaves back. The Seminoles were also doing minor attacks, but they were doing that because the Spanish were encouraging them to do it, you know, like having them do their dirty work, essentially. Andrew Jackson is going to figure prominently in the first, second, and third Seminole War, and this was the beginning. He was pulled back in the first Seminole War because he actually killed British and Spanish people as well, and the, the U.S. was afraid that he would start a war between those nations. But by the time the second Seminole War came on, we were under US rule and guess what? Jackson was president. So he came up with the Indian Removal Act and that was really when they started the Trail of Tears all over the country. And so the refusal of Seminoles to move west started the second Seminole War and the Creeks, this is a Creek Indian here, were really, they were in Oklahoma, which is where they wanted the Seminoles to go. They were really happy to have the Seminoles come because they used them as slaves. So they were interested just in that. This was the largest conflict in the United States. 1,500 US soldiers were killed in the second Seminole War. It cost them $15, $15 million. Um, but the, there are many, many really critical battles that occurred during the Second Seminole War, which we will talk about on Wednesday. So 3,000 Seminoles now are starting to be moved to Oklahoma. There are some really key people that I felt like I needed to mention. One of them was Abraham. 
He went with a delegation to Oklahoma to see about moving. He went representing the chief, whose name is Miss Canopy, of the Seminoles, and he also represented the Black Seminoles. But he was really a peace. He wanted to have peace. He wanted them to stop fighting, and so he really wanted them to fight, to move. On the second, on the other hand, there was Osceola, uh, and he was multiracial. He his band was overwhelmingly Blacks and he flatly refused to comply. He murdered an Indian agent and a compliant Indian chief during uh, negotiations. And then my favorite person, John Horse, you guys might've seen a presentation about him already. He was amazing. He was a translator, spoke English, Spanish, and Seminole languages. There wasn't a language called Seminole. He was a, a war chief, a strategic thinker, a crack shot with a bow and arrow and rifle, skilled in hunting, tracking, and cooking. He fought for both the Seminoles and the Americans. He persuaded a war chief whose name was Wildcat to move to Oklahoma. And then when they got to Oklahoma, the, the Creek Indians were so abusive. He and uh, Wildcat were actually the ones that moved to Mexico, to Nacimiento, which um, Lenny's talked about before the, the, uh, the slaves that moved to Mexico. John Horace is the person that led them to Mexico. He was a captain in the Mexican army. And then after spending some time in Mexico, he ended up moving back to the United States as a US Army scout and settled in Brackettsville. So he was a really, really key person during the entire second um, Seminole War. So now we're um, between the Second Seminole War and the Third Seminole War. We see that now most of the Seminoles are gone and actually most of the Black Seminoles are gone as well. So there's one last hurrah, the Third Seminole War and it's known as Billy Bolake's War. So it really wasn't a war, it was just a, some small incursions, some fights. And in the end, uh, they, uh, they stopped being, them having access to any food or anything. And because of, they were starving, Billy finally um, relented and the, the final Seminoles went to Oklahoma. There was one um, small contingent of Seminoles that stayed in Florida and they retreated deep into the Everglades because of course, no one wanted to live in the Everglades. If you've ever been there, it's, it's a pretty harsh environment. And there was a medicine man named Abiaka who um, was with the Seminoles during the first and second thirds wars for 50 years. And he is responsible for really um, their survival in the uh, Everglades. And the Everglades, the Seminoles that are in the Everglades today, uh, they count themselves as being never defeated. Let's see, so now we're just gonna talk just a very brief picture about the Black Seminole communities that exist today. The Brackettsville uh, Scouts, again, these are people that came, um, that came from Mexico back to the US led by John Horse. They speak a version of Gullah. So there is a direct connection between the Gullahs and the Scouts in Brackettsville. The Muscogos that um, Lenice did, there's a picture of the woman who sang in her presentation. You guys remember her. So the Muscogos in Nascimento, Northern Mexico, they also are direct descendants of the Gullahs. Oops. The Black Indians in Andros Island in the Bahamas, um, they are also um, are descendants of the Gullahs and they were the ones who left Florida when the British came in and they also went to Cuba, but the, the, Gullah, um, the Gullahs in Cuba died. They, they did not survive. So the black Indians in Andros Island, they do basket weaving and a lot of uh, their food as well. It's very similar to um, the Gullahs and which of course relates to the Africans, the West Africans. And then the Seminole freedmen. So actually some Gullahs actually managed to live and survive in Oklahoma. And they also speak Gullah, the Seminole freedmen. So to wrap up my presentation today, as we can see that really the Gullahs fought, honestly, from 1693 until the end in 1859. 
They are truly warriors. Uh, oftentimes when they would be captured by the US because they, the slave owners actually came as far as Oklahoma to get their slaves back. I mean, they just wanted them back, but many of them were such great warriors that they in the end just decided they didn't really want them to bring, come back and influence their slave plantations. So in, in summary, the black Seminoles or Gullahs in Florida shared culture with Indians fought battles for 50 years, utilized guerrilla warfare, lived sustainably in the Everglades, and successfully relocated across the United States in pursuit of freedom. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. All my senses Excellent. were going then. My ears, my visual, <laughs> my everything was just da -da 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 -da. That was great. Thank you so I, I you either going to what I say you're going to learn something unlearn something or relearn something I think I did all three that was a home run so thank you so much I appreciate I appreciate that we all appreciate that thank you. Next we are going to ask our sister Lanice McKenzie to come forward Lanice if you are there and you hear me let me know that you hear me. I hear you. I hear you. Thank you so much. And Lanice, what graduating class are you representing, young lady? Yes, representing Dr. Ben's class. Thank you <laughs> so much. <laughs> Woohoo! But you know, we are all one, we'll say family. So, <clears throat> so I'll be sharing a song offering for us today. And Thank you for your prayers as I get through this. And it's really always incredible to come together, uh, to be together, to honor our ancestors, all those that came before and celebrate, you know, black freedom, black justice today and black futures. Ashe. Ashe. Mm -hmm. Southern trees, they bear a strange fruit, blood on the leaves, and blood at the root. Black body swinging in the southern breeze. Strange fruit hanging from the poplar tree. Pastoral scene of the gallant south. Big bulging eyes, the twisted mouth. Scent of magnolia, sweet and fresh. Then the sudden smell of burning flesh. Here is a fruit for the crows to pluck, for the sun, for the rain to gather, for the wind to suck. For the sun to rot, for the tree to drop. Here is a strange and bitter. 
Because every time she sings, I hear that tone of voice that she has that's just so beautiful. But she just gives it to us just infrequently enough that you almost forget a little bit. And then she comes back and it's like, oh yeah, I forgot. Okay, here, here she is. Thank you so much, sister. We are, we are all over that. Woo, okay. All right, so. Next, we are going to go forward with our litany of sacrifice. And today that's going to be brought to us by Brother Desmond Amon and also Queen Mother, Queen Thurston. So if the two of you would please come forward. Good morning, we'll say community. Love and blessings to all. Gonna get ready to go over to over the litany of sacrifice. Hope everyone's ready. I think it disappeared from the screen. Hold on. There we go. Save us, O Holy One, by your name. Vindicate us by your might. Hear my prayer, divine protector. Listen to the words of my mouth. How can we repay the Holy One for the gifts that have been given to us? We will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the God of our ancestors. We will fulfill our vows to our creator in the presence of all our people. Gladly, we bring our sacrifices to you. We praise your name, O Amun-Ra, for it is good. And let us read. Omoja, unity. We shall strive to maintain unity in the family, community, nation, and race. Puja Chagalia, self-determination. We shall define, name, create, and speak for ourselves. Ujima, collective work and responsibility. We shall build and maintain our communities together. Our brothers and sisters' problems shall be ours to solve together. Ujama, cooperative economics. Together we shall build and maintain our own businesses and together profit from them. Nia, purpose. We shall make our collective vocation the building and developing of our community and the restoration of our people to our traditional greatness. Kuumba, creativity. We shall do as much as we can, in any way we can, to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than when we inherited it. In Imani, faith, we will believe with, all with our, our hearts, hearts in our God, our people, and in the righteousness and victory of our struggle. Ashe. Ashe. Amen, Ra, we just thank you for us waking up this morning, for blessing us with life and your breath of spirit. Thank you for that, the gifts that you have given us. Thank you for the shoulders of our ancestors that we stand upon. Thank you for victory, for resilience, for strength, for endurance, for prosperity, and for opportunity, for vision. 
We just thank you for everything that you have given us. Thank you for our family members that you are blessed that are still here. Thank you for those who have passed on to in transition and bring, bringing them to a new place of freedom and liberty and justice. We ask you to guide us, guide our feet, guide our hearts, guide our, guide our minds. Help restore us to the great people that we have, that, that we are. Help bless us to be a light to our community. Help us to practice the 42 laws of Mayat. Help us to stand on truth, justice, and righteousness. Balance, order, and reciprocity. Help us to stand against oppression. Against oppression. Help us to stand for freedom and justice. Help us to be our brothers and keepers, our brothers keepers and our sisters keepers. Help us to build our communities. Help us to use all the gifts that you have given us and show them that we are divine within and that we could do all things through you. Thank you for all. Thank you for spirit. Thank you for resilience. Amen. Ashe. Ashe. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Desmond and Queen Mother. I believe Sankara, Sankara class. And um, we just took down the information, but I just wanted to remind everybody, I don't know if we could get it back up there really quickly, that we do have several uh, venues where you can contribute to both Wose Oakland and Wose Sacramento www.wosecommunity.org, www.wosesac.com. There's also mail for people who still like to use regular checks or things like that. And then there's a couple of other, um, I'm not sure if it's called electronic or computerized methods of things like, um, um, I'm not sure if it would be like PayPal or things like that, but there's a couple of other uh, ways that you can go about it. And I believe you can even click on a link on your screen or you can go into the emails that were sent to you by Baba Tai with regard to the services and things like that. They always have a live link in them that you can click in order to have access to being able to contribute. Um, and again, we're all enjoying Zoom. For the most part, Zoom doesn't cost anything. At least it doesn't cost in the time that I have. But, um, it doesn't cost anything, but we still do want to get to a point where we can do things together in each other's presence, right? Whether or not that's actually in the sanctuary or whether we might get to a point where we can comfortably go to a park, we can comfortably go to a lake, we can comfortably uh, and safely meet up somewhere and, you know, I don't know, form a line, you know, two blocks long and share an ice cream cone. I don't, well, not literally, but you know, um, something to that effect. So we just wanna make sure that we are constantly contributing with the thoughts of the future in mind, not necessarily today. And whether that be $2, $5, $5,000, everything counts. So um, please don't hesitate and don't hold back, okay? Ashe. Um, you wanna go by? Yeah. So um, next up, we are going to be bringing forward our message for today, I believe, yes. And um, I just want to say that uh, this young lady, uh, Mama Nkechi Taifa, almost doesn't need an introduction from me. Um, and she went through the orientation with me, with Thomas Sankara class. And um, the fact that she has come in so strong and so alive and so energetic and just, I mean, she's just throwing life at us by the handful, by the fistful. Um, you know, I was thinking about how I felt about that this morning when I was getting ready uh, for it today. And I decided that the right word was motivated. 
that's how I feel about this young lady. She makes me feel motivated. Like, what have you done today? You know, what did you do yesterday? What you gonna do tomorrow? You know, she, she's one of those people that just makes you kind of check yourself and say, how productive have you been? What have you done for the cause? You know, and, and I, I'm, I'm all about that. I love it. I need more people like that around me. I'm, I'm good with it. You know, somebody that just, just makes you really just turn that mirror. So I um, want to point out, as many of you know, wear my glasses so I can see what I'm saying. I need my glasses to find my glasses. Um, she recently wrote a book and released a book, Black Power, Black Lawyer, My Audacious Quest for Justice. I just love that. My Audacious Quest for Justice. Um, some of you may or may not know, she also wrote Shining Legacy, Reparations, Yes, The Adventures of Kojo and Ama, and there may be others that I'm not aware of, but that's just to name a few. Uh, we are in the days of Googling people to see kind of like how much they're connected, and this young lady, I got tired after about three pages, and I was just like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, I've had enough right now. I'll come back and get some more of her at another time. But without further lip service for me, because she can take care of herself, please, 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 Ms. Thomas Sankara, orientation, Wose graduate, come forward in Kechi Taifa with the message for today. Thank you so much, my sister Rona. And yes, yeah, shout out to the Thomas Sankara class of. Rose, thank you so very much. So let's just give this one second. I'm about to pull this up. And share my screen. And do the view. So if you all can give me a thumbs up that the um it's good from the screen. all right let's get this party rolling i'm really thrilled for the opportunity uh to share a message with you today and i hope that i will be able to leave you with just a little bit of information and inspiration uh so my message for this morning is calling all heroes and heroines resiliency in a time of adversity and, you know, I just want to be perfectly clear for a moment, if I can, because we're not just living in a time of adversity. We are living in a time of hostility. We're living in a time akin to what is described in the book of Nefertiti in our sacred text, the Husea, in a time when, quote, the land is in turmoil. And no one knows what will come to pass, but what the future will be is hidden. We are living in a time, as described in the book of Kak Hepera Ratsoneb, where changes are taking place. And it is not like last year, where one year is more troublesome than the next, where the land is in turmoil and being destroyed, and where ma'at, righteousness, and order has been cast out, and it's fat evil and chaos is in the White House. Oh, excuse me. I mean, it's in the council hall. The way of God is violated and his commandments are brushed aside. The land is in turmoil and there is mourning everywhere. The land is in turmoil. Grandma can get kicked out of public housing. You know, the land is in turmoil. Nearly half of the total US prison and jail population of over 2 million people is African-American. The land is in turmoil. There are more than 1 million people on probation and parole and more than 200,000 women behind bars. The land is in turmoil. Grandma, I keep saying, can get kicked out of public housing as a result of the drug conviction of her grandson. People are denied public assistance or ain't able to find employment because of the infamous box. Have you ever been convicted of a crime? The land is in turmoil. Sharmika could be sent to Harvard for the cost of what society pays for her incarceration.
the land is in turmoil. Oh my gosh. I, mm, I'm just so, Take your time. Take I know. Time. I am so overwhelmed with emotion. Take your time. I'm so overwhelmed with. <sighs> I'm so overwhelmed with Sister Lenise's song. I'm so overwhelmed with everything that's happened with respect to will say i'm so very overwhelmed with what's going on in the world uh today so i'm so very well to my powerpoint it's not is is is, is in uh different uh places but we're just going to go right here because land is in turmoil because i already know that the more people sent to prison the more profit there is to be made we're talking yeah. about a perverse profit incentive to arrest more people to convict more people to incarcerate more people and for longer periods of time, the land is in turmoil. We have a system that disregards the crisis of COVID-19 in the prisons and jails and other cultural settings where our people, Black people, are disproportionately incarcerated, resulting in over 200,000 people having contracted the virus and over 1,000 incarcerated people, as well as correctional staff, having died as a result. The land is in turmoil. Black folk whether incarcerated or not, are dying disproportionately from the coronavirus mm. due to pre-existing illnesses, chronic illnesses with roots to the enslavement era and its genocidal aftermath, the result of epigenetic damage that has traveled through our DNA, through our DNA, throughout the centuries. The land is in turmoil. We're living in hostile times. There's a prison bid waiting for young Tyrone as a result of his criminal conviction. The land is in turmoil. Just two days ago, 1968, Tommy Smith and John Carlos were suspended by the US Olympic Committee for giving the black power salute to protest racism and injustice during the Olympic medal ceremony. People, the more things change, the more they remain the same. We're living in some hostile times, year after year, decade after decade, century after century. Although the players change and the scene shifts, the script irrefutably remains the same, unequal justice. It doesn't matter whether the issue is vigilantism or police uh, 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 brutality, whether it's a prosecutorial misconduct, or whether it's unjust sentencing as a race, our people, Black people have been subjected to a double standard of justice. The land is in turmoil, hostile times, the Scottsboro Boys, the Emmett Till, the Black Panther Party, the Attica Rebellion, Eleanor Bumpers, Michael Stewart, Amadou Diallo, Abner Louima, Johnny Gamage, Michael Stewart, Jenna uh, uh, Six, Troy Davis, Oscar Grant, Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, Eric Garner, Ayana Jones, Freddie Gray, Makia Boyd, Alton Sterling, Philando Castile, Sandra Brand, Ahmed Aubrey, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor. The land is in turmoil. You tell me, Baba Sidney, has it been justice, my brother? Or is no, it just us? Teach, teach. The land is in turmoil. And we are almost, we are almost at the end of the Trump regime, but we are resilient. I repeat, we are almost at the end of the Trump regime and we are resilient. We survived the slave ships and the cotton fields and the cane plantations and the tobacco farms and the dogs and the water hoses and we survived Donald Trump. Why? Because we'll say, we are heroes and heroines and we are a resilient people. Although the land is in turmoil, there is now mass appeal for the need to find better, more creative and more cost-effective ways to push the envelope to achieve change. It is time, it is time that we raise the ante and have the audacity to advance creative solutions. We are confronting the disastrous policies of the past 400 years. We are protesting in the streets. We are raising hell in the suites. We 
are resilient in these times of adversity and we are making a difference. It doesn't matter whether we're talking about, uh, you know, Kwanzaa, whether we're talking about Juneteenth, whether we're talking about any black holidays that we are there, we are the ones will say that we have been waiting for resiliency. The Breathe Act, a bold, strategic, visionary, modern day civil rights act, resiliency. Black Lives Matter, movement for black lives, resiliency, my people, self-defense. Uh-huh. Yeah, the no, you know what around coalition. Self defense. You know, we're talking about defending our people, our communities, resiliency. National Mamas bail out days, where as we did during the enslavement era, black folk united to buy, quote unquote, their family members' freedom. Today, 62% of people given bail are unable to come up with the money. And they remain incarcerated until sentencing. In a short period of time, millions of dollars, millions have been raised to pay bail for Black women jailed for minor offenses. Resiliency, mass protests in the streets demanding change. Resiliency, the proliferation of Black books. Got to do it, y'all. <laughs> Resiliency. Frederick Douglass once said that power, power, power can seize nothing without a demand. And we are demanding no more drug war. We are demanding no more felony disenfranchisement. Are y'all with me? We yes. are demanding no more juvenile life without parole, Brother Desmond. Mama Alicia, we are demanding no more incarceration of women. Brother AJ, no more school to prison pipeline, no more warehousing generations, Brother Jeff. And we are demanding defund the racist, ineffectual policing and to reinvest in our community. Yes. I know y'all, it ain't easy. It's called the names. Yeah. It ain't easy. We all get tired. I most certainly do. But when I'm tired, guess what? I think hmm. about what my heroine, Harriet Tubman did for a living and I become what? I become resilient. Although the land is in turmoil, you will see the resiliency within principles that are pertinent to the building and maintenance of yesterday's freedom mentality. Despite the enslavement era, despite the black codes, despite the peonage system, despite the sharecropping, despite the lynchings, despite the Jim Crow, there were people who had a show not freedom mentality. People who saw opportunities, Brother Mark Salisi, where That's others who saw obstacles, okay? People who, uh, 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 the, the, the ones who saw those opportunities were opposed to the, those who had that slave mentality. They only saw obstacles. Those with the slave mentality said, I can't. Mm. Mm. It's too hard. Those with the freedom mm. mentality said, how can I? How can I accomplish this? How can I get to freedom? Those with the freedom mentality made decisions quickly. Whereas those with that slave mentality, they procrastinated and they made decisions slowly, if at all. See, if you want to be free and independent, if you want to overcome adversity in your lives, if you want to stop the turmoil in the land, then you must be open to a freedom mentality. You must see the opportunity. You must seize the opportunity. You must make your decision without engaging in the paralysis of analysis and then receive your blessing. I'm calling all heroes and heroines. It is past time that we all put on those hero and heroine hats. It's time that we all become leaders. And what is a leader, y'all? <laughs> a leader is someone who has the ability to get people to willingly do more than they normally would to rise above the norm. Isn't that true, Minister Imhotep? I see, I see, I see. We know, though, that leadership is not necessarily like nice because leadership takes people out of their comfort zone. And other than Harriet Tubman, exemplifies that quality. <laughs> Sister Harriet was definitely a leader. She didn't take no stuff. <laughs> Come on what? now. All right. <laughs> what if there were hundreds? What if there were thousands of Harriet Tubman, Sister Vauna, helping to lead us out of that slave mentality? 
focus on the abundance, not the challenge. Do you think Harriet Tubman focused on slavery? No, uh uh-uh. She focused on what was ahead. Freedom, what you focus (laughs) on expands. You have to have confidence to step up to the plate. You won't won't run unless you swing that bat. And Harriet Tubman definitely (laughs) swung that bat. So Harriet was small, her mission was tall. She had to be brave to set free the slaves. Harriet was strong, she never went wrong. Though Harriet was wanted, dead or alive, she kept them pushing, she took no job. Harriet was strong, she never went wrong. She uh, trudged she, that uh, south she, 19 uh, times to leave 300 north. They waded through the streams and they scaled the high mountains, but they never, ever, ever stopped going forth. They mm. followed the moss on the side of the trees, for they knew it led north, it was nature's key. They followed the north star, for it was a guide. By moon, they would travel. By sun, they would hide. The art of escape was a dangerous one as they traveled in disguise. By boat, by wagon, by foot, by carriage, she found no one. <laughs> no one would take us back to slavery of our She was awesome, y'all. Sister Darnisha. Yes. Sister Bobby. Sister Shinga Ray. Sister Fanya, Queen Mother Thurston, can you imagine what type of freedom fighter, entrepreneur, turmoil smasher, justice uh, seeker Harriet Tubman would have made today? Jeez. Someone who had a goal, someone who was consistent, persistent against all odds, a leader. Yeah. She did not just think of herself, but reach back time after time after time again to help others someone who refused to let others jeopardize the collective mission okay to the extent that she traveled with a shotgun you see harriet tubman definitely had a freedom mentality she focused on the opportunity not on the obstacle it's all a matter of focus because in every situation there are both obstacles and opportunities which one do you normally see all right focusing and seeing the opportunity and it will lead you to freedom. Success, my will say, brothers and sisters, is more than just desire. It's more than just goals. It's more than just activity. More than just hard work. You see, success is largely determined by that mentality that you have, that slave mentality or that freedom mentality. We have been programmed to learn and believe in limitations. When you say you can't, Mm. Your mind stops searching for the answer. Remember the law they passed in the United States, y'all? The fugitive slave law, Mm. which mandated that no enslaved person, even if he or she had reached a free state, none of us was safe. And it was the duty. It was the obligation. It was the responsibility, the constitutional responsibility of every single white man, woman, or child to deliver us up to the government. Did that law stop Harriet Mm. Tubman? Hell no. She refused to accept that limitation. She had to go all the way outside the jurisdiction of the United States to seek relief. To Pennsylvania and New York, she brought the slave till those states were safe no more. Then all the way to Canada, she trudged where her people would be slaves no more. I want to call all my heroes and heroines, okay? Leaders don't operate in isolation. They build a team. They build a mastermind team, right, Brother Taihimba? A mastermind team that will lead them to victory. And that reminds me of Demar Beasy, who masterminded a slave uprising in South Carolina. He Teach. saved his earnings. He won from a lottery game, and he bought his freedom. He learned a, a trade. He became very skilled. But guess what? He mm. felt that it just wasn't enough. Just like Harry Tubman, it just wasn't enough mm. for him to be free. He wanted Mm. the same for his brothers and sisters. So what did he do? Mm. He developed a plan. He organized a mastermind team of people that would help him to be successful. Where's your mastermind team to help lead you to success? If Mm. you don't have one, you need to be about the business of developing one. Wow, one day, VZ won a lottery game and was lucky when he's all in his name. He went straight to his owner because he had the right fee, gave him the money and bought himself free. 
Fisi learned the trade of carpentry and became very learned and skilled. But he felt and saw that blacks of the free were still harassed, beaten, and killed. So one evening at a secret meeting, he declared, it is high time we had our share. If it be freedom and land we really desire, we must be willing to fight fire with fire. Hence gathering six others in absolute trust, making Peter Poyas his right-hand man. Secrecy was to be an absolute must if they were to succeed in freeing the land. Also Ned and Rolla, the governor's slaves, were in this bold plan for blacks. Monday jail and mingle hearth in the Angola, Sasawa, Gala, Jack. Carpenters, blacksmiths, shipbuilders by day, plotters of both strategies by night. These eaters men planned a slave uprising that would put the slave owners in utter frights. That's what we're talking about, y'all. <laughs> Breaking mm. the bonds of chattel slavery of yesterday mm. and of prison and corporate slavery today. And to put yourself in optimum position, you must build and nurture that mastermind team, that elder team. You see, having a freedom mentality is not something that happens haphazardly. It has to be something that you plan. It has to be something that you are intent on making work. Now, I've been sharing some excerpts with y'all uh, from a book for young people. I wrote, uh, where is it? I can't find it right now. Uh, 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 Sister Vonna mentioned I wrote decades ago, back in the day, back in the late 70s, called Shining Legacy about Black heroes and heroines. Uh, but I have some more. So just indulge me just for a minute because the principle of your mentality that I've been talking about, okay? The development of the mind reminds me of Malcolm X after he was arrested and put in jail. At first in prison, Malcolm acted really mean. They called him Satan because he made an evil scene. But a few years later, he took a long, curious look in the prison library and checked out a book. Malcolm hey. had read a book since the eighth grade, but he copied down the words. Page after page after the dim prison lights were out in his cell, Malcolm read until his eyes were no longer well. He studied about Africa and its ancient glories. He studied about Blacks and read many stories. He went through the dictionary and learned much knowledge. Later on, many would think he had been to college. For us today, y'all, yeah. many of us still have that slave mentality. We mm. refuse to be. Mm. There are mm. books mm. that would help to emancipate us from the pit of mental slavery. Yeah. And there are books that will fill our minds with a freedom mentality to smash the turmoil all around us, but we don't flock to them. Books that Wose hold sacred, such as Ayikwe or Mars, 2000 Seasons, such as Chancellor Williams' Destruction of Black Civilization, such as Stolen Legacy by George G. M. James, and of course, Maulana Karinga's The Husea. We are so, so very blessed today. We don't have to sneak around and read like Frederick Douglass did back in the enslavement mm. era. Jeez, we don't have geez. to read the dictionary from cover to cover like Malcolm X, but we cannot and we must not take the development of our minds for granted. Like Professor Manu, we must continually sharpen our saw, sharpen our mind, and we must make sure that others do so as well. Hey. So we have the importance of developing mind, but what about daring? What about courage to, see, to, 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 to change your programming from a slave mentality to a, a freedom mentality? You must be daring and you must have bravery and courage. You must go further than others are willing to go. You must take risks. Heroes and heroines of the Wose sacred community. Let's look at the story of Joseph St. Q who led a revolt on a slave ship, a I'm saying shit, a ship whose name ironically <laughs> was the Spanish word for friendship, Amistad. Amistad the Amistad. Mm. The year was 1839. Rebellion on a slave ship. It was liberation time. Amistad the Amistad, a great thunderstorm's might loosened a nail in the slave hold since you and changed its people in the night. 
bravely destroying their kidnappers with swords and a knife, sparing only the navigator's life. Since you smiled and cried, we are free of those beasts. To the navigator, he ordered, we want Africa, steer east. <laughs> that took courage, y'all. Can you imagine? You've been snatched from your home, your country, your land. You've been stripped of your language, your family, your clothes, your culture, everything that was familiar to you. And a foreign looking people who did not speak your language have thrust you in chains in the bowels of a ship on the high seas and you break free. This is bringing on down to today. There are far few of us who exercise that kind of courage today. Most of us don't have the courage to break free from our J-O-Bs <laughs> and mm. start creating and sustain a business that we own and operate. Most of us don't have the courage to be an entrepreneur. Most of us are waiting for someone to give us permission. You see, if you want your freedom, you take it. Like Joseph sent you. If you want to be successful, here, this is the bar. Jump over it. Mm. You must come across mm. as a person of confidence, like Brother M. Hotel like Sister Rauna. You see, it's far easier for those with confidence to be successful than those without confidence. You don't have confidence? Learn about your heroes and your heroines of the past. They excel despite odds. Recognize that there is no advancement without adversity. There is no strength without struggle. There is no destiny without difficulty. Don't say, I can't, because thank you, Barack Obama. Yes, you can't. Oh, they want to stay on Joseph St. Q, y'all. Oh, Why oh, does they want to stay on Joseph St. Q? Okay, there we go. Oh, y'all trying to prevent <laughs> Wow, that, hey, that was some spirituality stuff. They say, take your freedom, y'all. We ain't gonna move beyond that slide, you know. Um, <laughs> but the quality of faith, which we all need, my heroes and heroines. Okay. Uh, because the going will definitely be uh, rough. Always brings me back to Fannie Lou Hamer. You see, we don't read about many of these heroes and heroines in the uh, history uh, books. Many were ordinary, average, everyday people, y'all, just like you and I. But guess what? They stepped up to the plate. They answered the call, just like every single one of us leading this service today. All of us in the Dr. Ben or the Thomas St. Carl Clay, we stepped up to the plate and we answered the call. She and who better exemplified this also than Fannie Lou Hamer. Her name was Fannie Lou Hamer, born in 1917. Grandma had been a slave and the times were still mean. The state was Mississippi. Rubia was the place where black share cropped the land for another people's race. Now, the owner of this land was a white man who was slick because he devised a little plan when Fannie Lou was six, promising her whatever she wanted from her store. She had to pick 30 pounds of cotton or more. Though he gave her what he promised that sly, slick day, he now knew that she could work. Gone were childhood days of play. So as a little girl, she labored picking cotton for the whites from can't see in the morning so can't see at night, you know? So what happened? Y'all know, the civil rights folk came down from the, uh, came down to the uh, South and said, you know, y'all, you, you know, you got the right to vote. But do you know what Fannie Lou went through just to try to exercise that constitutional right to vote? Not only for herself, but for others as well, <laughs> but for working to help others pass that voting test. She was detained, questioned, then placed under arrest beaten till her body was battered and told that she would die. The kicks left her kidney injured and a blood clot in her eye. Kept mm -hmm. being harassed, threatened, and from her job prior, Franny Lou often hit, said that she was just, just sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. But yeah. never did she give up that little light of hope but kept right on registering Black folks to vote. Y'all, Franny Lou would be turning over in her grave if she knew about Trump's executive order creating a sham commission or voter fraud, a sham commission on voter fraud. Black folk know about voter suppression. Where was such a commission when Fannie Lou was being beaten to within an inch of her life because she dared register black folk to vote? Where was such a commission when Mega Ever was a murder in his own driveway because he dared to register black folk to vote? Where was such a commission to combat those grandfather clauses, voter tests, and other nonsensical 
laws that fraudulently suppress the black folk. My brothers and sisters, I don't know if I should go here, but if there ever was a time when our vote mattered, that time is now. Teach. I don't care. Teach. I don't care if we hold our nose while casting our ballot. Vote. I don't care if Kamala Harris used to be a prosecutor. Vote. That's I don't it. care if Biden vote the damn 1994 crime bill because we're already in the process of dismantling votes, y'all. That's Ooh. it. While we still have the constitutional right because this country is on a slippery slope towards police state fascism. <clears throat> Eros and heroines of Wose, take pride in all and everything we have accomplished before it is all wiped away. And the hero that reminds me most of pride and self and community is none other than the Honorable Marcus Garvey. The mighty Marcus Garvey, if you have ever seen, was the proud black man with the red, black, and green. The mighty Marcus Garvey had a lot of pride. Black folk were on his side. He sailed from Jamaica to New York City. He organized a group in the 1920s, the Universal Negro Improvement Association to millions was a great inspiration. Marcus Garvey was awesome, y'all. He organized about buying black. He organized about self-defense. He had the Black Cross nurses that worked so fine, the Black Legionnaires and the Black Star Line. But what happened, y'all? Mm. Similar mm. to what happens all mm. the time. Mm -hmm. But some brainwashed Blacks turned up their nose. The racist court system said, Garvey's got to go mm. back to Jamaica. He was finally sent. But as he went, he left us this hand. Look for me mm. in the world. Oh, and he said, look for me in the storm. Look for me all around you. For my spirit will be freedom to form. Ah, oh, yeah. That whirlwind. That whirlwind, Baba Katabazi. Baba Ustadi with the drums. Baba Sidney <laughs> with the smile. That whirlwind that was smashed to turmoil in the lady. Teach. Woo! Well say community. All of these heroes and heroines manifested my arts, my arts justice. They manifested a freedom mentality, a prosperity mentality. What does that mean? That means in seeking balance and justice, they saw opportunities where others saw obstacles. It means that rather than mantra being, I can't do this, there is too much turmoil in the land, everywhere is war. It was rather how can I do this? How can my art bring justice and peace? It means they made the decisions quickly as opposed to procrastinating and making decisions slowly at all. We must put on our very own hero and heroine hats and with self-development, with courage, with persistence, with passion, with faith, with action, follow their example and lead ourselves and our families and our communities to victory. So what must we do? We must break it down to the Miss Pearls of our communities. Who is Miss Pearl? She's that elderly woman, that lady who sits on her front porch every day watching everything going on. Yes, we'll say the Miss Pearls of our communities are crying out for you. They are crying out for my art. As taught by the Husea, the book for moral narr narrative, the balancing of the land lies in my art. Truth, justice, and righteousness. They want, no, uh-uh, they need, we'll say your mentorship, your guidance, your prayers, your forgiveness. It is time for more art, righteousness, and order to be turned to its place and its fat, evil and chaos to be driven away. The Miss Pearls of our community are sitting right next to us in our pews. They are kneeling with us on our prayer rugs. They are peering through the Venetian blinds of their windows, watching the police terrorize their communities. Miss Pearl, Mr. Bobby, little Tyrone and Tynesha, they're waiting for your leadership, we'll say your courage, your vision, your faith. They need your songs, Baba David and Mama Latrice, Sister Shanita, Brother Daoud, Brother Hassan, Stones of Fire. They need your powerful prayers, Baba Sydney and Mama Connie, Mama Akanke. They need your liberating libations, Minister Mwaksalizi. 
Mm. I know it ain't easy, y'all. Mm. We all get tired. I certainly do. But again, when I'm tired, I think about Harriet Tubman and what she did for a living, and I become what? Resilient. My last example, we must have boldness of action. To not be afraid to go against the status quo, as exemplified by Rosa Parks. You see, Sister Lenice and Sister Debbie, uh, Rosa Parks was not the first one to refuse to give up her seat, but her action happened at the right time and in the right place and sparked a nationwide movement for systemic change. Sister Rosa Parks, strong and bold, standing by that bus stop, tired and cold. Along came the bus with its Jim Crow laws, which seemed like a prison with invisible bars. I refused to give up my seat. I paid my fare like all on this bus. I remain strong if you beat me. I remain strong because I must. Police, police, arrest this woman now. Throw her in the jail. She's a threat to this town. Rosa looked around and thought it just isn't fair, but the people acted like they didn't even care. But there were folks in the community who were practicing black unity. And at a big meeting that night, they discussed this bus plight. If black stopped riding the buses, said a brother, the, the, the bus company would lose a lot of money, said another. A, a bus boycott sounds like a good way, said a mister. They sure don't need to get a rich job I'll pay, said her sister. So they got Rosa Parks out of the Alabama jail and all had faith that their plan would not fail. Then no bus in Montgomery did black people ride because it took away African dignity and pride. Rosa organized taxis, bicycles, carpools and mules so blacks young and old could get to work and to school. And with the leader they elected Reverend Martin Luther King, blacks walked all that winter, summer, fall and spring. And then finally, the state was forced to change the laws they had made because while Blacks stayed off the buses, the company didn't get paid. Yeah, Rosa Parks went to jail. But there was a movement, Minister Molly, Minister Armadi. There was a movement, Minister Alicia, led by a young minister, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, that not only got her out of jail, but set in place a set of circumstances that changed the landscape of America, resiliency. I've been a part of movements my entire life, the Black Power Movement, the Black Studies Movement, the Anti-Apartheid Movement, the Independent Black Schools Movement, the Movement to Free Political Prisoners, the Reparations Movement, the Movement Against mm -hmm. Mass Incarceration. Well, it's like we could not be situated at a more critical time. We are witnessing the dawning of a new movement Nothing radical, but one just for Black lives to matter. We got to connect the historical dots of yesterday with the burgeoning movement in the streets today. We got to connect the movement against the prison industrial complex with the movement against the war on drugs, the movement against police brutality and lack of accountability with the movement to shift resources from militarized police forces to a more humane system. We need a comprehensive movement so that they will think twice before slapping a $2 million bounty on the head of our sister, Asada Shakur, a mm. heroine who escaped on a modern day underground railroad. My brothers and sisters of Rose, we are living in some hostile times. We are at war. Everywhere is war. And there is turmoil in the land. I'm not promising that the resiliency journey will be easy. But whenever times are hard for you, or whenever you feel stuck, I want you to remember the demand of our great heroine, Harriet Tubman, as she led over 300 people out of enslavement. She simply told her people to keep going. And if you could just take off your mutes, and when I sniff my hand, you say, go with me and say, keep going. If you hear the dog, she demanded, Keep, Keep going. going. Keep if you see the fortune in the woods, she demanded. Keep going. No 
Don't ever stop. Don't ever stop. If you feel tired, said you'll be free or you're gonna die. You're gonna be free you're gonna or, 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 or you're gonna die. That's what she said. Area seven. Arcade London. That's what she said. Time to glory. No struggle without God. Back on you. If you want to enhance your spiritual development, if you want to be empowered, if you want to be resilient, keep going, keep going, keep going. As the fear mm -hmm. in the book of rising and transformation, the Hosea says, raise yourself, O vindicated one. Run, for you are exceedingly strong. You shall sit at the heads of the powers of heaven. Receive your due honor. Your foot will not be obstructed in heaven, nor will you be opposed on earth. Rise up, O vindicated one. Take a hold of your head. Gather together your bones. Collect your limbs. Shake the dust off your flesh. Yeah. Rise in your strength. Do what you did before, my brothers and sisters. You will not encounter opposition anywhere you walk, and your foot will not be obstructed anywhere you wish to be. Keep going, my heroes and heroines of Rose. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Ashe. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Ashe, Ashe. Ashe. We Hallelujah. got to keep going. We must. To God be the glory. Well, we must keep going. We must keep going. We must keep going. There's turmoil yeah. in the land, but we must keep going. There's turmoil in the land, but we must develop that freedom mentality. We must keep going. We must do all we can, though, to liberate our young and not so young from self destructive individualism, selfishness, self centeredness. We must keep going. We give thanks and praises this day for uh, the, the beautiful, powerful message from the beautiful, powerful sister Nkechi. It's a strong, bold, poetic, powerful, and empowering. We give thanks and praises for this message. And right now, we just want to extend the invitation. If there's someone out there that's tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired, uh, we invite you to come forward, uh, unmute yourself and say, I want to be part of this movement, part of this spiritual, political, uh, self-determination movement that's going on in and through the Wolf Say community of the Sacred African Way. Uh, I want to be counted in. I want to be counted in, who, in one who has a, a freedom mentality that I'm going to do all I can, every way I can to liberate my people, young and not so young, for from, from, from self-hate and self-destructive uh, 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 incarceration that this system, you know, not only behind bars, but just behind uh, 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 destroying our minds, destroying our hearts, destroying our unity. Uh, is, is there anyone out there today that says, hey, I'm so glad I'm tuned in to Rose and I want to become part of this community uh, and take the word back home? <laughs> Anybody today, <laughs> we've got to rise up. We've got to rise up, build up, love up, and be the people that the Most High put us on earth to be, that our ancestors have shown us we can be, and we just keep on going. Well, we, we've got to keep going. We've got to keep going. Uh, and, you know, one of the things that, that I want to say is we've got to vote. We've got to vote. We got people saying, I ain't voting for Joe Biden because he, he, well, he, yeah, you got to, if, if you don't like Joe Biden, you got to vote for the lesser of the evil. You know what Trump is. Well, <laughs> and geez. if he gets another four years, who? Uh, so, so get out there and vote. And, 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 and everybody that you know, make sure they, they vote and, and have the, the determination, the, the liberation, freedom spirit within that they have to stand in line for a few hours. Do it. Do it. Do it. So we, we, we've got to vote, um, but 
we want to vote today on somebody who wants to join the World State community. Well, nobody here. We we have uh. Well, I do uh, want like to. Seventy. Who said what? Well, I'm sorry, I'm Shamila. Um, I'm doing my work right now. I'm a teacher. I'm a special ed teacher, so I work on Sunday. So I'm I'm usually have my camera off. But I was curious about when you guys were having your new membership class. We're having new members. Well, uh, let's see. We're in the middle of, of one going on right now, and, and we we have them on on evenings. Um, um, in recent times here, we've had them on Thursday evenings, starting at uh, six p.m., six. Mm -hmm. going for uh, two hours for five uh, weeks. Minister Macalisi, may I chime in? Sure, chime in. We currently have a class going on right now. It'll be done in about two weeks. So it mm -hmm. will probably be very shortly after that that we'll be starting up a new one. If you do have interest in finding out more, please be clear and say that. And we'll be happy to yeah. have someone talk and with you, know, you in I, another I, um, room. I always seem to miss it because sometimes, like I said, I work on Sundays. So sometimes I don't make all the meetings. Sister Shamila, this is Bob Atai. I just sent you my email address. If you contact me um, sometime this week, I'll make sure you're in the next class. Ah, okay. shit. Ah, this is, shit. This is Pastor London from Chicago. And I just wanted yes. to uh, know if you have a, uh, a reparation committee. I most certainly want to join. I'll send my email. We are located in Chicago. And we, we, we appreciate Sister Nkichi and uh, we want to get involved with you guys. All right, my I say. Pastor. I say. Uh, I say. Yes, yes, yes. Who, and I who, see who a is lot this? Of people that thank you for coming out. I see lots of my people. Thank you. So, Nikishi, do you know who that was that just spoke? Yeah, that was Brother Khalid London from way back in the day. I don't know if you remember him. Okay, no, but uh, Brother I, Khalid, I if you. If you send me your email, if I, I don't see you, so I can't, I can't private. I can send message. it to you by the time. Okay, send me his email address, and brother uh, Khalid, I will get in touch with you offline. Yes, sir. All Thank right. you. All right. All right. I think. Oh, I see. You. All right. Okay. What what a blessing this day. Woo! What a blessing mm -hmm. this day. Yes. From, from from the beginning here to the, I guess we're near the end, but Sister Mukechi. Wow, this here this black Woo! lawyer going for black <laughs> justice <laughs> and telling us that you, you got to keep on moving, you got to keep, keep running. on moving. She didn't. She didn't do like uh, she didn't pull out no weapon and threaten us with it like Sister Harriet. <laughs> 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 the, 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 the weapon is already out there. The weapon is 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 in the White House. The weapon is uh, in, in those those. Base base folks that will follow that uh, uh, psychopathic resident, not president, that psychopathic resident. Now, really? whatever trail he he lays out, uh, mm -hmm. the weapon is already out there. So we have to have that 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 weapon of spiritual determination, that weapon of self determination, that that weapon weapon of uh, uh, liberation in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls, and and act on that energy, act on that power, twenty four seven. 365 don't let our children be be more influenced by the uh, so-called smartphones than they are by the, the parents and, and 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 relatives and family uh, community don't let uh, uh whew, don't let uh, uh those 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 already uh, uh, infiltrated with self-destruction folks that run around our communities be more in, influential with with our young people than uh, we who have that that history, that that consciousness, that spirit, that Sister Nkechi was 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 pouring out on us today. We've got work to do, and we have victories to achieve. Yes. Uh, so we give thanks for those that uh, spoke up today. We got those two that want to join us, and you know maybe there'll be others in other ways and other times that uh, that we're not aware of right now that we'll let it be known that they want to be part. Of this community, of this movement, and we just say, "Ashe, Ashe, Ashe, I'm All right, Sister Rana, I'm getting out of your way so you can <laughs> do what you need to do for the rest of this gathering. Somebody has their hand raised. 
Somebody has your hand raised? Yes. Who? Where? Speak up. Kalahari. Yes. Dan Danjaman. Yes, Kalahari, speak, please. Hello, Kalahari from Minister Makalisi. Mm-hmm. Kalahari. All right. What let's is she saying? Him, what is... Let's find him. Baba Kalahari has been speaking of joining for several weeks now with my mom and I, so I'm hoping we can find him out there. Kalahari, if you please speak up. All right. We're searching. Kalahari, where are you? Kalahari, what have you got to say? You might be muted. If you're muted, you need to unmute yourself. Yeah. Kalahari, we want to hear from you. All right. I don't know if I could change this so that I can see him. Well, I, okay. I, I well, I know how name. to get in touch with him. Somebody saw it? Okay. I see the name, but he's not, he's on mute. Okay. Well, mama. Okay. Well, sister, okay. Sister, mm-hmm. sister I definitely Ronald, know how know. to get in touch. All right. Yeah, I know how to get in touch with him. So I'll make sure I get that passed on to Tayemba. But if you can hear me, Baba Kalahari, I know that you've been thinking about this and wanting to do this for several weeks. So I definitely want to say, I'm glad that you raised your hand and we'll definitely make sure that if this is what you want to do, that you are able to do so. Welcome. Mm. Okay, so the next thing we are going to do is um, have uh, the closing song, which is uh, from Baba Hassan. Hassan, if you are still there, could you come forward and close us out with Lift Every Voice and Sing? Sure, yes, uh, thank you. And I'm, I'm, uh, the last time I did this, um, I, the, the point came up, I guess, that Wilson well, didn't normally used to sing the second verse. No, but, but after you got that... us hooked, so did you got us, we're, we're all, you know, it's too late to turn back now, so, you oh, know. No, no, I, I can't turn back. As a matter of fact, after listening to that sermon, I could just sing the second verse three times, but we won't do that. Okay. <laughs> Lift every voice and sing. Till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmony of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening sky. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day. Begun, let us march on till victory is won. Stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died. Yet with a steady beat, have not our weary feet come to the place for which our Father sighed. We have come over a way that with tears has been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughter. Out from the gloomy past till now we stand at last where the white gleam of our bright star is cast. 
God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Thou who has brought us thus far on the way, Thou who has by Thy might brought us into the light, keep us forever in the path. We pray, lest our feet stray from the places out, God, where we met thee. Lest our hearts, drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Shadowed beneath thy hand, May we forever stand true to our God, true to our native land. Okay. Woo. Beautiful, beautiful, thank you. Beautiful. Ah, Shay, ah, Shay. And as we stand together, joining hands virtually, joining hands spiritually, joining our hearts together. We know that we are following in the footsteps of our great ancestors. I say that we have just came through a powerful mis message given by Sister Nikichi. I say, and I understand that, that we are the seeds of those strange fruits. I say those are our ancestors watered by that sacred water of Gilead that our brother Hassan had sung about, that we are the we are the children of, of the, the young cubs, as Minister Imhotep said, of Marcus and Martin and uh, 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 Nat Turner and all these uh, great ancestors, and we are following in their footsteps. And as we join hands and knowing that this is the path that has been laid out for us. This is the path that we are walking along. We hold hands together and say that we are one people, one, one, people. people. one, one faith, one, one God, faith. one, God. one God. destiny, one knowing destiny. that we are the most beautiful, beautiful. people on the one face of the earth. earth. I share, I share, I share.